record this. All right. So yeah, so the first example is just a double bottom, but yeah, so the first setup is, was a double bottom based off of this. An entry could have been anywhere from any of these wicks. Like I can go to a smaller time frame to give you guys like a better example. So that was for the double bottom right over here, right? So on the four hour, it was a double bottom, but on the one hour, it looks like a lot like consolidation. So where would we be looking for entry? So even though it's a four hour double bottom, we're not gonna just be buying here, right? So over here is the first bottom, right around this area, you can consider the first bottom. And then the second bottom was right around here. Right around this area, I would probably go in somewhere here. So basically if you wanted to catch the first trade, you would have probably, you would have missed this trade for sure because it's still a trend. He pulls up, pulls back. So right after see this big wick candle, this shows you that they just took on a lot of buy orders because the markets were selling and they picked up a big buy order. Boom, boom. Buyers kept buying. A lot of banks entered on the buy. Boom, boom, boom. And the market closed about here. So at that point, you know that a lot of sellers are trapped here. Some people were selling over here and they were selling and they got trapped by the wick. So then now they want to take profits here, but you're never going to come back to the area. So right after yeah. this, we're a good buy signal. So this is around six, right around, like right over here before in the morning star. Like we can see this bearish engulf, doji, and then a bullish engulf. So even right after here, you would have had a pattern. And then that could have signaled an entry if you wanted. It would have been a late entry. Like if you wanted the maximum pump I would have entered right around here. And right around after this doji happened, I would have cut another wick. I used to wait for a wick down, same area. So maybe about right around there, I would have entered. Or I would have had a sell stop. The buy limit. And I wish I would, I would have been in the trade for a while. I would have been holding it to like one to six. But that's uh, yeah. So this is the timing is perfect as well. It's right around it's right around New York session. So it's eight AM over here. Boom, it flies up. The best timing would have been at eleven. So at eleven like around nine, between nine to eleven there's usually uh pump or like a pullback and then the market will go into its real direction. So as you can see there's a big pullback down. This, this would have been the most optimal entry. If you enter right after it, it would have been straight into profit. That would, that would have been if you got the first bottom, right? Even if you got a really tight risk reward, like if you entered right around there, you would have been in profit like at least one to three almost, but you could have held it longer. But this is like the first entry. This is not the textbook setup, right? This is just the first entry of profit. But this would have been the money shot. Where, so for this double bottom, the first bottom point, and while the second bottom is forming, you can see that the environment that we're currently in is like a lot of consolidation right around here. But we can extend this even to like this area as well. Like it's like two boxes, like separate over here and, and up. Over here. This is like the average price. Like this level right here is about the average price. And we consolidate below it, consolidate above it, below it. So we know that we're in a consolidating market. So at this point, we can, we can wait for the breakout or if we, we can catch the intuitional entry. So because the double bottom formed on the four hour, we know that we're looking for buys around around the support area, around around the demand area. So yeah, and we're looking for, and we're looking for these buys. We're trying to time them around London or New York session because that's when we're gonna get most of the volume, right? We don't want to be buying like rain markets gonna be closing around four or five p.m. Like you're gonna be holding a lot of drawdown, a lot of uh like the spreads are gonna increase. So you're you know you're gonna be holding you're gonna get swap fees and so on. So yeah, right around here, you can see it's 8 a.m. So right, that's when I start trading. Like right with 8 a.m. candle closes, so at 9 a.m. sharp, I'm there, right? Like I'm looking at the charts like 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. I'm, I'm trying to plot out entries, but right around there, 8 a.m., we do a big bearish angle up. So a lot of people are selling. Everyone thinks, oh, fuck, seller, seller, because everyone's looking at recent price action. They value recent price action so much that they forget to look at the bigger picture. And that's where retail traders get slaughtered because they come in the morning, 9 a.m., they see, oh, big beer shingle. They're going to, you know, look for a retest. It's going to be pulling back, and these guys are selling around here. But mm -hmm. that's what I like to buy. I want to do the opposite of what retailers are doing. So I'm looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture was the double bottom. So if I wanted to get an aggressive entry, I could have caught it right at the end. So a closed beer shingle, a big wick. So the big wick basically tells me that they picked up a lot of entries. Like sometimes there is no big wick. You know, it'll just, but when the big wick, it gives you more confluence. So once the big wicks form, I can enter right around here. Have my stop loss below the wick. And write it out to like one to six. That's my minimum. And it matches up with this supply area as well. You know, and that would have hit.
So that would have been the first entry, but suppose you missed that entry and then you keep waiting and you miss your entry. So now it's up, comes down and consolidates. So now you don't want to enter, right? So now you just wait till the next day, maybe, or like till London session. And then we come back to entry. A lot of stuff. Region, but I don't use the trade agent. So we keep waiting. And then at London, once again, we stop on tie. Like during these sessions, we're always going to stop on and then we're, we're going to reverse. So around New York, we stop on to low and then we flew up. And then right around London, we stop on to high and we fall down. Like we do the opposite of re retail traders. Like over here, retail traders, they saw this and they were selling. So the banks bought it, bought it, bought it, and then fucked around. And then now people were like, oh, fuck, banks, we got stopped on sales earlier. Now it must be a buy because we broke above this buy area. And that's when the banks like, fuck it, we're going to sell. So the banks sell and the retail traders get slaughtered again because they think it's a break, retest, and they were buying it here, but they got slaughtered and they fell. That's where you got to stay with your original bias. And that's why it's good to always trade like the session you trade. Because look, New York over here was buys. Again, once again, New York, Again, is buys like this time it wasn't at like the timing is the exact same actually. Look, 9 a.m. close. Like, oh, now over here is 8 a.m. close. The stop. This is a one hour later. So they had a stop up. 9 a.m. close. So right at 10 a.m. Boom, it flew up. And this would have been the most optimal entry. So even if this day you got stopped out on your buys, you could enter it again next day in New York session long. And this would have been the most. This would have been the most optimal entry. So stop us below this wick. I'd, pro I'd probably make it below these wicks. And then your TP would be a one to six risk reward. Like that's like the minimum I was I was aiming for. You could have probably got a bit higher, but that's the minimum. Yeah, I was actually in on this trade early, but I got out. But I re-entered again. Like I got out maybe right around here. As soon as this area broke, I was like, I'm gonna get out. Oh, uh, where the hell did it go? So yeah, so that was the first trade setup, right? The double bottom on the four hour. But a really big shot for this one was uh, was basically once it did break, we were trying to catch the pullback. So the first shot was the double bottom. So once it, it breaks, it commences the uptrend. So it comes after the uptrend, then the pullback. So this is level one, level two. So we're trying to catch, like if we wanted, we could have traded the pullback. We could have caught the pullback as well, looking at the one hour. So you would have caught this trade for the buy, right? I'm just going to delete these red. So yeah, you would have caught the double bottom. And it flew up maybe from, maybe if you entered anywhere around these lows, it went to maybe 190 pips, right? Even if you secured 70, 80 pips, that's fine. That's a strong thing. And once it breaks up about, once it breaks above this level, makes a low and it goes up again. At this point, I would put my stop loss at, at break even for sure, but probably even profit. I probably lock it into profit here and gradually move my stop loss higher and higher. And then so once, we break above the highs, then I would put my stop loss below the swick. So I'd be, I would have locked in maybe like 20 pips, maybe you'd say, right? So yeah, then it flies up and then right around like obviously 60, 70, 80 pips. That's when you want to start booking profits. I'd book at least 60, 70% of my profits and put my stop losses even tighter. So I might put my stop loss, it's fine trade around here. I put my stop loss around here at about 50 pips and then let the rest run. I would have got stopped out, but it's that way you're secure, right? You beg 70, 80% of the full position and then you put, let 20%, 30% run. So in over here, like you knew the trend line broke. So once trend lines break, what tends to happen is they get retested just so any early buyers or sellers get stopped out before continuation. So that's exactly what happened. So that day in New York, we flew up, we flew up, we kept flying through, through Asian and then London, it continued up. And right, right around the ending of London, that's when the bull trend started to exhaust. So when the bull trend exhausted, as they're on eight, so 8 a.m. it exhausted and then boom, nine and nine eight a.m. to nine a.m. it just kept dropping. That would have been so that if you if you're up, I wouldn't be trading this time, so I would have missed this trade. So it's like exhausting. Like this is a this is the pattern as well. This is an evening star. It's a blue shingle, a doji, and then a beer shingle, and then you enter on the pullback wick, and boom, melt. That would have been like a smooth melt, like a 50 pip melt or something like that. Yeah, just around 50 pips. So yeah, I fell. But the trade that we're looking for after that, so the textbook setup, this is not a textbook setup. This is like an intuitional entry. So yeah, the textbook setup would have been this buy, and then this would have been for the reversal trade. And then once you break above, now we're no longer in a reversing env environment. We're in a consolidating, I mean, we're in a trending environment. Over here, we're in a consolidating environment. But over here now, because we broke above this lows, and above these highs, we are in a trending environment. So when we're in a trending environment, we can use FIBS, put it from the start of the trend, aka our entry to the end of the trend. So. 
to point A to point B, and then we come back to point C at around 61.8. So 61.8, this is like a good area just to have like buy orders already set sometimes, but it's also uh, good to wait for conflicts in a small time frame. So we can see right around 9 a.m. again, so the same thing over here, 9 to 10, we had a stop hunt and flew up, same thing again. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., we had a stop hunt. And then right from there, we flew up. All the retail traders, they see this big beer shingles, they're selling, they're selling. You know, they're free test, they keep selling, they keep selling. But rather, the uptrend retest. So this is a trend line retest. We can enter anywhere around here. Like we can enter here, but this is a hard entry to catch, right? But this is why we want to catch the double bottom again on the one hour. So it makes a one hour double bottom here. So first bottom goes up a bit, and second bottom. So the great rate we made this bullish hammer, uh, rejecting the 61.8 level. We found support around here, so we could enter it anywhere after this. So an average price is there, put a stop loss below the wick. And our TP is, first TP is at negative 27. That's one to five risk reward, and our second TP would have been at negative 61.8. And that's like one to seven risk reward. But let's say you caught at least one to five. I would have probably closed it right around here. One second. I would have closed it right, right about here. Because over here we made a first top, and then we made a second top, so this is a good sell. So at that point, I would have either closed my trade or I would have hedged it with the sell at this top. And I would have put my stop loss right about here and I would have had my TP farther. So in case, either way, I would have been in profit. So if this trade went up, I would have made money and if this kit, this fell, I would have made money. So yeah, these are the main trades that we're looking at. Like the first trade was our textbook setup for a reversal right around this area. And then our second trade for trend continuation it's A, B, C point right around here. So A, B, C, and then we ride it up to D. And this is like a complex pullback. It's like a, it's a reversal pattern, right? But the trend is up. So the reversal is, you, should, you can't be trading a reversal when the, it's an uptrend market. You can only be trading reversals in a consolidating market, as we had over here, consolidating market. And then... Uh, yeah, over here, we could have even got faked out by a potential double top. Like over here, it's a, it's the first top, come mix the bottom. And then this is like a demand zone. And look, this demand zone is, is respected after as well. Like it's not just temporary. After so long, it comes back and respects the demand zone perfectly. So that's how you know there's a lot of buy orders around the area. So we make a double top, make a second top, but this time we break the top. So once you break a demand zone, it becomes a supply zone. So this would have been a good entry. Boom. But, but that's not a textbook trade. So the textbook trades were the double bottom right here. And then this, this uh, trend line retest. So yeah, that's for your is the, that's, so yeah, we're in, so basically we're in a downtrend environment. We finally made a double bottom, textbook setup for the buy, catch the first push move up, and then we wait for the pullback, right? So the pullback comes, trend line retest. So the first setup is double bottom in a consolidating environment. So just make, write that down. And then the second setup is a trend line retest. That's in a trending environment. So it's trending up, get the retest of the trend line, the broken trend line, and then you enter the long from here to from point A, B, enter at point C, all the way to point D. And obviously E, F, it goes on and on, right? And using LE wave theory, it's like level one, level two, level three. I'll, I'll draw it on for you guys. Uh, so yeah, it's like impulse waves. It's like level one, level two, level three, level four, and then level five exhaust is around like here. And then we have eight. So that's, you guys get that? That's the LE wave theory. So the first push is level one. Pull back retracement, level three push, pull back retracement. And we know it's Elliott wave theory. Some, one of the rules is the level, the level three pullback, I mean level four pullback, it cannot pass the level one move. So the level one move is right around here. It ended right around here. So it's one, two, three. So the third, move, the third to fourth move, it cannot push back below this. Because if it pushes back below this, then it is not a level three move. Then it's different. Then it's the trend is down. It's not an uptrend. So an uptrend, it has to be like this. Same thing for a downtrend. Level three, four cannot move past one's move. You guys get what I'm saying? 
It's one of the main Elliott wave theory rules. You can like search it up. Uh, I'm not gonna do it. You can just search it up. Elliott wave theory is like three main rules. Some baby hips as well. So you guys are going over that. And then so that would have been the textbook setup. So the text. One second. Textbook set setups. Uh, would have been um, so first a double bottom for the consolidating environment. But once we caught that move. Now it's in a trending environment. So in a trending environment, we're not catching double bottoms, double tops, or reversals, head and shoulders, or none of that. All we're looking for now in a trending environment is going to be continuations with the trend. So it's a trending environment. We would have caught the Fibonacci over here. And once again, we could have caught the Fibonacci from the second move. So we would have caught one, two, we would have caught wave number three, and then we would have caught wave number five. So for wave number three, it was a 61.8 reversal. So it's wave one, down wave two, and then up wave is three. So we would have caught that. Down wave is four. So we tend to ignore the down wave five and the down wave two because that's a counter trending. So that's, I wouldn't recommend that for beginners. That's better for intuitional traders. Like I'll do that sometimes. But for those, I'll usually scalp it. I won't, like, I won't be holding that to long. counter trend, right? So this trade would have been from two to three. I put a Fibonacci from point A, B, C. It finds support right around the 38.2. So that would have been a good buy area. And then it flies up to first negative 27. It finds resistance. And then it breaks through and it goes to 61.8. So yeah, once the level five formed, so it's uh, the LA wave level five formed. And now at this point, I'm looking for reversals because we did one, two, three, four, five, and like a lot of fuckery. So at this point, we can expect reversals. And there's like a major pattern that also formed over here. Like I can draw the supply zone. From this top of this wick to the bottom body of the candle. It's it's a bullish engulf, doji, and a bearish engulf. So this is a this is a, a evening star in itself, and it's also like a double top. So that would have been a good entry for reversal. So basically, we're in a trend. So we're in a trending environment. So consolidating, we caught a double double bottom, and then from there we're in a trending environment. So in the trending environment, our trades were pull back double bottom right here on the one hour, pull continues up. So yeah, no no real trades over here. It's kind of ugly. Maybe I would have sold it, so I would have lost that trade. That's fine. And then th this is kind of ugly. So this is a consolidating environment. I'd only look. I'd only be looking for tops or bottoms. So this, there's no really. There's a good bottom over here with the trend. That'd have been fine, but I would have probably missed that trade. It's not too clean. <laughs> consolidating over here. I'm looking for a double top or head and shoulders. Over here we have a head. It's a shoulder, head, and a shoulder. So we could have got this entry. Might have got stopped out. But once we close back in range, it's a good trade right there. But suppose, even if we didn't see the head and shoulders, it's still a double top. So if the first top happens, like, if we zoom in, if you guys can see, this is a evening star pattern as well. So it would have been a good entry. Time is it? It's, it's 8 a.m. closed. So right at 9 a.m., this is perfect. Once it's closed, enter on the wick. Stop plus above structure. And you would have caught, like, a good 1 to, to 3.5 risk reward trade. And then, obviously, if you had your stop plus wider, like, it would have probably been here, your TP. But you would have got stopped out. But this is why we put our stop. This is why we bank profits. Like maybe once I was floating like 50 pips, I'll bank half my profit from my stop loss here. So that way, even if I get stopped out, that's fine. But yeah, the real entry would have been right around after this. I would have missed this because the timing is like during Asian. So I wouldn't be trading that. And that just falls from there. So that's that's uh, the double bottom, double top over there. And we're in a consolidating environment. So now. So now I'm only looking for tops and bottoms. We come down again. So this is uh, this is another demand area. So we can see we made demand area went up. So once we come down here in a consolidating environment, it's kind of ugly. I might have entered a buy somewhere around. It's kind of ugly. I probably wouldn't have entered a buy unless we broke up. And then maybe around here I would enter a buy after the Zoji maybe. But I'm not going to count that trade. It's kind of ugly trade. But over here is a good trade. So it's like we have this we have the supply area drawn. So on the one hour we make a nice first top, second top, we could doji right around there, start up in a good entry. But the timing for this isn't good. Like the timing for this, yeah, the timing for this is whack because it's like Asian, so I wouldn't have got, I wouldn't have caught that trade. But I'll show you guys a trade that I did catch like this couple days yesterday, I think. This was the trade. So uh these. The first trade I caught is basically the same setup that we we're looking at earlier. The same setup over here. 
that we caught from the breaking reaches, same thing happened again over here. And I was predicting the exact same thing. As soon as I was visualizing, as soon as I was uh, basing my trade off. So, and it played out to the T. So I entered my first position right around here. So I made a head and shoulders. I made a shoulder, head, shoulder. I entered around this look over here. It's because it made a doji. And then after the doji, it's like two, three wicks in bar. It's like it makes one, two, three wicks and it flies up. It does that a lot of times. Like all the three over here as well. Like one, two, three wicks and it flies up. Like one, two, three wicks and it flies down. Not always three, but it's like a, it's a kind of good way to see exhaustion. Or we have to three and it flies, right? And then obviously it comes back. Another example could be uh, like, oh, over here, like one, two, three, small wick, and then it flies up. Or whatever, let's just look at example over here. So yeah, that trade I caught, I caught it, I caught the bottom over there with the reversal and it's in a consolidating environment. And it made the four hour reverse head and shoulders. So that gave me the indication that it's a reversal. So the trade was, I think I entered around London, around like one, two. Actually, no, I entered around here. Actually, I don't even remember where I entered still. I remember I, remember I entered at the bottom. I don't know if it was here, the bottom, or if I entered at the head and shoulders. Because I know my stop loss was here, so I was protecting the trade. But yeah, anyways, regardless, the trade is, it's a perfect double bottom as well over here. So then the perfect entry would have been like anywhere around London, like 2 a.m. close right with his big dojis. Once the doji close like that, you, would, you could have a good entry at any of these doji closes. Stop us blow wick. And then pay your TP. It's a, I would have my TP like right around here. So I did have, I had it even higher. So I had it to the zone, but my first target was like at least still here. And my second target, my main target was around here. That would have been like one to seven risk reward. So yeah, that was the first trade. I caught it up from around this area. For It went up about 40 pips. I closed some profit, but then I started seeing exhaustion. So I was like, I knew that we broke the trend line, so we'd probably come back. As, as the technical setup says, first, so this is the first setup, the first trade, and then this is the second setup. This is the counter trade. So we're not going to be entering this, but once the technical setups are... It pulls back to a trend line. You buy, you buy that. So right around here, I'm looking for a buy. I would have had like after this. This is a perfect entry. Like it forms a potential uh, morning star. And then once you see this wick, it shows like some buyers are entering. So I would have had like I would have had a I would have had an entry on the pullback wick. Right around there, put your stop loss on the left side. Of the wicks right right below this wick right there. You would have got a good entry and you'd be pulling the profit. It's like yeah. And my target would be wider. My target would be still up there. I target at least one to six. So, yeah, I wouldn't be there yet, but I'd be holding it. That would, that would be my textbook trade. But you could exit that trade as well right around here because you see these you see these exhaustion wicks right around here. So at that point, once I'm up a trade, like I entered right around this wick, I'm up about 40 pips, 45 pips on this pair. I would maybe seem to exit the trade because a lot of exhaustion over here. So why not? And then now we can see that we're in... Uh, Manipulative environment because we're making higher highs and we're making lower lows. Like this is like this big indication of manipulation is because it keeps stopping. Oh, people people have sell, uh, stop losses higher, so they go higher and higher. And same thing over here, people have stop losses below these, and they keep going lower and lower. So currently for this environment for this trade, it's there's not really a clear trade. We're in like a level one, level two, so we might be. Level one, level one, level two, level three. We might be making a level three move up, but for now it's kind of ugly. Let's go to the higher time frame for this pair. And just delete everything. So yeah, off the daily, it's looking kind of whack. But I can, there's a lot of manipulation over here, so I can see maybe a potential reverse head and shoulders for me. And then we have a shoulder area over here, a head area over here. So a potential shoulder. Just to... See that on like the higher time frame, I mean the lower time frame. Let's see. So yeah, this is a consolidating environment. So as we see in a consolidating environment, we're only selling tops and bottoms. So I can put the trade from the top, start of the top trend to the bottom right here. 
So we can see we rejected 61.8 level. Then we came up to reject the 78.6 to the T, and we came down here. So now we're back. We're on the 61.8. So I expect maybe a stop on around over here. Like this is not a bad place to have like a sell limit. Like maybe put a sell limit right there. Have your stop loss above this wick. About 30 pips. And then you know you can write this trade down. Maybe it's a yeah, right around this this demand zone over here is perfect. And it gives us perfect one to six risk reward. So we're targeting about 180 pips, 30 pips stop loss. So yeah, I'm probably gonna go ahead and place this sell limit for myself on my live account for sure. And just watch that play out. I'll leave this on for here and then we'll look at it in the next video how it plays out. But yeah, so that'd be the sell trade I'm looking for. I currently would not be looking for buys. And then we can see there's also this like trend line over here. So once this trend line breaks, so I'm basically expecting like a trend line to form somewhere around there. Like it's not formed yet, but that's what I'm kind of visualizing, like what I can see in the future. And it's also around FIB level. I'm just gonna make things a bit more clean. So yeah, once we see some exhaustion around this level, around this area, maybe around let's say here, it'll pick up our entry, and then we'll get we'll get a really good risk reward. But one thing we can like get we can get even better risk reward. One sec. So yeah, we can get even better risk reward by using this. So it's like the blue is where our entry will be. Suppose we enter right around this wick, and we catch a stop loss, to get a tight stop loss at the red. Then we can adjust our risk reward profile, and then we can see it will be we can catch a lot more risk reward. So we can catch probably maybe around I would say once eight is good for now. Once eight to so about there. So the market tends to repeat. Okay, what is this? All right. So yeah, the market tends to repeat its tendencies a lot. So I expect this would break. I can put a fib from one second, the top to the bottom. So this fib would probably be around maybe 61.8 or 78.6. So I would expect it's breakthrough. And then from there, it will pull back. So make level one, level two, and then I would catch another sell, maybe from around this area, from, from the pullback, down to this supply area right over here. So yeah, this would be the first trade. I would take TP around one to six, one to seven, one to eight, anywhere around here I would take TP, and then maybe I would buy it. If a double bottom formed, I would buy it, and then after that I would hedge the double bottom with the sell around here. And then my second entry sell would be Stop loss maybe above this wicks. And then I ride that down to at least about here. And that's about one to six risk reward, one to seven risk reward. So yeah, that's what I can see playing out for uh here in SD. So this is basically consolidating environment. So our setup is gonna be uh we're gonna sell the top or buy the bottom, or we might buy the trend line around here. But the top looks better because it looks like our head and shoulders forming. And then trend line is gonna break. So this is going to be optimal setup. This is like a, this is like a money shop. It's a trending environment, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and then boom, meltdown to D. That's for your NSD. And then in Confluence, we can also look at NSD JPY and see what that's saying for now. Right, and see if there's any, com if there's any Confluence. So just looking at like this chart alone, we can see that we're, we're approaching this Supplier, I'm just demanding my bad, right around here. So, as we're seeing, as we're expecting to maybe have a major sell opportunity on your NSD, there might also be a major buy opportunity on NSD JPY because they're absolutely correlated. So, as, ex as I expect on your NSD to go up a bit to make a stop on tie to 61.8, you guys remember, you just want it again. So, yeah, I expect it to keep going up a bit. Stop on tie and then come down. Might even go to this top over here. I'll get an even better entry if it goes there. Like to be honest, I can just put this here. So I'm just, I'm I'm not gonna hundred percent trade this. I'm gonna wait for some exhaustion because if that trade's not there, if that trade misses, then I'll enter maybe I'll get an even sniper entry here. I'll get even better risk reward. So I make even more profit if it goes up. I'll get one to twelve. So that way, like, even if this trade loses one to seven point six. With this trade, I'm gonna make even with this loss, I'll make one like minus it's one to twelve risk reward. So take out the loss, I'll make one to eleven risk. I'll make one to eleven profit. So I'm making eleven times what I'm risking. 
But yeah, I'll just go to NJ for Confluence. So this expect to go up for now. And for this, I expect it to go down. So it's NJ. So it's probably going to, everyone's going to be trying to buy it here. Double, double bottom. Oh, let's buy it. Let's buy it. So we can't be doing the same shit as everyone else. And we can see we're in a major downtrend as well. So we got to stop all, all the early buyers. So I'd rather enter on like a wick. So this is like a good demand area. Look, look at this liquidity, look at this liquidity wick. And it lines up perfectly with the 61.8 level. So I wouldn't mind having a buy position placed right around here. So it'd be perfect. And then you can target your first supply area, one to six risk reward, and then so on. And once the trend line breaks, enter back on the pullback. So yeah, this is, our confluence lines up for both NJ and for your energy. So for, yeah, your energy is going to go up a bit. This looks like it's still going to drop. Drop to about here maybe. Stop out everyone trying to buy it over here. And then finally go up. And, uh, yes, yeah, so that's good confidence for NSDJPY. Let's go look at GJ. So, yeah, well, I was looking at this, this uh, GJ channel. So, the trend line broke, retested. So, I did catch this trade. It was profitable. But after that, it didn't play out as I wanted. So, basically, I was trying to sell it from there. I had this drawn on early. but So, it came back right around here to it broke the trend line and retested. So I entered the position right around here. Caught like 50 pips. Like nearly 50 pips. And then like how many pips is it? Let's see. Yeah, it's the move almost 50 pips. It's like 40, like 40 something I caught, right? From the sell. Trend line, trend line retest. Continuation. So it's a high probability setup. Like it's a trending environment. Trend line break retest. So then I caught that. It's a high probability setup. But the trend was actually up. So it kept going up. And then I, did, I didn't keep selling it because I, I got out of my trade and then I had a position running and then I got stopped out on that. It was stop loss and profit. So I got stopped out at like 10 pips and then it broke above. So this trade out, I missed this trade. But I had this red thing drawn on from before. So this is a good area to sell because this is uh, delete everything. So it's more cleaner charts. This is a good supply area. But this is also a good manipulative zone. Like I can see from these wicks that we might that we might stop on a bit higher. And maybe I should have a sell entry around here. <laughs> like just intuitional based. The 145 is perfect. 30 pip stop loss. And CP right around this demand area. That would be an optimal trade. Maybe even pull it up a bit higher. So this way it's like, because I know a lot of times people are trying to sell it over here, sell it over here. So the banks know that. But and right when we break above, so suppose the market like breaks whatever breaks above and retests it. People are gonna be trying to buy it now. People are gonna be like, oh, this high is broken. Like, oh, this level is broken now. It's a retest. Retest. It's buys. But banks know that, so the banks do the opposite. So when it's below it, now banks people are selling it. Banks are gonna buy it up. And when it's above it, people are gonna be buying it. Now at this point, it's when banks sell. So we gotta do the opposite. So we're gonna be selling from there. And then yeah, our targets. We can target this zone as well. This is like a demand area. Target this demand area and so on. And that's for GJ. Let's look at, well, let's look at gold one time. All right, so I'm just gonna delete everything for gold. Oh uh, yeah, so for the gold, looking off the monthly, we're tapping in this area. So yeah, this is when I kind of began trading as well. From what I remember, like, we're in this consolidation zone and I was waiting for this, I was anticipating this break and a retest on it, but the retest never came. <laughs> but yeah, that was a while ago. Um, uh, so we can see that this area is uh, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, actually I didn't begin trading here. I saw that, I remember looking at, this time, looking at this chart when I began trading. I never began trading here. I began trading around here somewhere. This is a re not. This is the trade. Yeah, whatever, I'm not going to talk about that. But So we can see that there's like a lot of liquidity over here from the past. So what often tends to happen is the market will come to these liquidity areas. And from here, it'll make a reversal. So it might make a reversal, double top, consolidate a bit, and then drop. So that's going to be long term. So I think maybe this year we have the U.S. elections. So we might keep on going up. And then around the U.S. election times, that's when we're going to drop. So I think gold should be an uptrend for a bit. Like fuck around everyone who's trying to sell it early. And then finally start dropping like a motherfucker when the elections come through. But for now, it looks like a really big uptrend. Like, so look at the like, recent price action monthly is hella bullish. Level one, two, three, 
three, four, level five. So ABC and the continuation up. So we're still in a major uptrend on the, on the monthly. Same shit with the weekly. We broke the past previously, broke the past highs. We're just floating right around there. And so we're in like a crucial zone right now. We could, from here, we can go either up or down because we have, a, we have a big trend line area to retest. If we do not retest, this would be a money shot. So it pulls back to here, right around here is a money shot. You know, this is like a FMG call. Like from here it's a shoulder, head, shoulder. So this is a money shot. This I would fucking risk 20%. <laughs> I'm fucking around. Just always manage risk. Don't risk 20%. Risk like 5%. So yeah, I have like a minute left. So I'm going to quickly cap this off. Let me know if you guys have any questions. And then I'll cover the questions in the next video. And quick setup. Uh, this looks like a double top might be forming. So once, if we stop on tie, it'll be a good sell. Right around here. Once we form like a one hour doji and sell it to about here. Until then, until for now, it's still a buy. And once this breaks, pull back, enter sells again over here. Our right, peace, guys. You'll see you guys next time. DM me any questions or message me in the chat. Peace out, boys. All right. Peace.